Welcome, everybody. This is Derek Giorgino for another segment of CCN's Money and Markets, an interesting segment for you guys this time, a little different. Instead of hearing me drone on and on about taxes and social security and all of these real page-turning topics, you're going to hear from a special guest that we have, Dr. Meghna Singhvi. PhD in accounting from Florida International University. Also, she's taught business and accounting at Loyola Marymount University for over seven years and is currently working on her first book about young people, specifically millennials, and the various traits that successful young leaders in business exhibit. Dr. Singhvi, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And I, I want to just jump right in. So my first question for you is really what makes millennials successful? And, and what are some of the common traits that successful millennials that you have taught uh, exhibited? I've seen that, uh, first off, the millennials who are more likely to succeed are the ones who have an intrinsic belief that I'm going to be successful. Second, I've also seen that somebody who has a mentor who is not necessarily a world leader. A lot of millennials are saying, I look up to Elon Musk and Warren Buffett, and yes, they are celebrities, they are leaders, but I have seen in my research that the ones that are more, most likely to succeed are saying that it's really apparent or a close relative that has helped them and mentored them. So right. there is a different w outlook. So in other words, you think there might be an issue with, oh, LeBron James is my role model. Kim Kardashian is my role model. Instead, the successful young people really look to people that they know personally, a mentor, a professor, for instance, or, or, or a parent or, or a relative, and, and you think that that's a more effective way to find role models. Exactly, because uh, it's, it's just that the young people may be discounting how much value a parent or a sibling Bling or a close, close um, individual might be adding, and it's okay to have uh, LeBron James as your um, as your idol, but don't discount your parent. Absolutely, well, that's, that's a very interesting insight there. And uh, to that note, of the successful young people, and I know a lot of them are probably still young, so it's tough to see where they're going to end. But but in so far as where they are now and how successful they are, is there a correlation between? how successful they are in the business world now and, and how well they did in your class, even grade-wise, for instance? Actually, I do see a correlation. So I do see that hardworking students and the students that demonstrated good grades in my classroom did end up becoming more successful at work. So it just shows that when you sign up for a class, you're committed to it. And that same commitment shows up at work and helps you be more successful. So in other words, kids, study hard, that work ethic in the classroom what you're saying, Dr. Singhvi, is going to translate likely into the professional world. Absolutely. Right. And so this leads kind of into my last, my last question for you with young people particularly. And I'm young. Okay. So I know this. Young people, we like to take risks. We're very, a lot of us are very ambitious. And it's no surprise. You know, you hear about the young and the reckless people and, and, and whatnot. Do you think it's always a good idea? You talk about in the, in the book you're working on a little bit about following your passion and, and when that's a good idea and when it's not such a great idea. So do you think that us young people, this is advice for everybody watching who's young and myself, should we always blindly follow our passion or are there instances where we should step back a little bit? I think young people should definitely follow their passion but tread cautiously. So I would say get out of your college and really get to know who you are and be self-aware because you can be passionate about something and then be on the wrong road. Sure. So what I've seen is a lot of young people are saying I'm, uh, I'm anxious about what I want to do or I'm, I'm stressed about class or I'm stressed about college and I keep reminding them that it's not a race. You need to slow down, be mindful, enjoy the college experience. Right. Only then will you be able to identify what your true passion is and right. then be on that route. And it's okay to work for somebody for a year or two because you need those people to advocate for you, almost sure. like your personal board of directors. So if you worked for somebody, then they can vouch for your work ethic. Sure. So don't just be a vagabond and go out on your own and say, I'm pursuing my passion. But instead, invest your time learning from somebody else. And I think you'll go much further. And that makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure many of your students have gone on to be entrepreneurs huh. and research actually shows that a majority of successful entrepreneurs got their idea from working from somebody else right like exactly. they were working a job and they said this really stinks how can I make this better and then they turned that into their business so so the insights you just offered make make complete sense and before we wrap up I want to give you a chance to talk about your initiative with nomadic families in India and uh, in specifically in your home city or, or province 
Um, and so you can go ahead and, and give us some color around that. I think that our listeners would be interested in, in hearing that. I appreciate that. Uh, Derek, in 2015, I met with a group of nomadic children in Udaipur. That's my city in India. It's the number one tourist attraction, one of the most sought after places in India. And uh, these kids, they travel for 300 days in a year with their parents. Wow. Because they basically, what they do is they set up rides, Ferris wheels in different fairs. As a result of their travel, they have zero access access to education. Mm -hmm. So I'm on a mission that I'm going to provide and find a way so that they can be literate. They can find a way sure. to sign their names, read papers, m open up a bank account and maybe ch be the champions of their family. That's the only way they could get out of that vicious cycle. So I am here with you because of my education. And I think if I can do that for somebody, then my purpose is solved. Well, Dr. Singhvi, that's, that's a wonderful story. You're a woman of many talents, a former mentor of mine as well. And uh, thank you for being with us, Dr. Singhvi. We appreciate it. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for this opportunity. That's all we have for today's segment of CCN's Money and Markets. Hope you enjoyed it. A little something different with an expert here uh, at the interview desk. Uh, please join us next time. We've had a great time.